my beautiful people i am back with another freaking video that's funny to say because <laughs> i usually only do one video so it's like like another freaking video girl it was not that funny let it go <laughs> but anywho um Yes, I'm back, and this time I will be explaining how I got my LVAT in the first place because, you know, I just want to answer probably some of y'all questions um, about how I got an LVAT in the first place. Um, so first I want to start off, my name is Kayla Lewis. I am 23 years old. Today's date is March 20th. 2023 um you can watch my first video to figure out why i'm in the hospital but um this video is going to be basically all about how i got the lvad and yeah and i'm gonna share my story with you guys so um if you're not familiar with the lvad it is a left ventricular assist device so it's basically a heart pump it um pumps the left side of my heart um I was diagnosed in 2018, um, so around that time, that was my uh, second semester of college or whatever, I, I graduated from Georgia State University, Ooh, state not southern, um, <laughs> uh, what you call it, I literally, um, yeah, like I started feeling like uh, sick around um, January of, uh, of 2018. Um, it was like around like uh, Martin Luther King's birthday and I remember because around that time I had got like a matching tattoo with my mom and probably like um, probably like a week or so after that that's when I got sick so I thought I just got sick from like one of my homegirls or whatever who used to always be in my dorm room because she had just got sick so I thought I just caught her cold um, and yeah so it was like um around that time and stuff i just uh was like coughing a lot so it was like i don't get sick often and usually the longest i've ever really been sick is maybe like two weeks or so and stuff but usually it'll, i'll probably be sick for about a week and then i'll be good so like after like a week had passed and stuff like that whatever i still had like this kind of dry cough like i would wake up um in the morning and stuff like that would just like cough in like just out of nowhere or whatever it was quite honestly a little weird and stuff like because i know like my sickness usually like doesn't last that long but i was like wasn't thinking too much of it i'm like maybe this time it just ain't like the other times or whatever but um didn't think it was anything bad but um so it was like this hill over at georgia state so i used to stay at Patton hall and um it was this hill i always took to class langdale um i think it was like langdale hall or something like that but yeah i used to always um take that that um that hill up to my um my class and stuff and um this time when i had took my uh the like took the hill to the class and stuff i literally had to take a break like it used to be like some stairs um over to the side or whatever and i used to like i used to have to like well that time and stuff i had to like wait for a minute and i was like whoa i'm getting a little windy it's a little hot like you know what, what's going on and stuff i was thinking like you know back then i, I put on a freshman 15 or whatever so that's what it was but baby you know mm -mm, to my surprise so um so i had called my mom and stuff because i always i it was like i i know i'm one of those people who just get homesick so easily like i really do get so homesick like and so around that time i used to go home all the time my mom hated it but my dad loved it but um yeah i, I had called my mom for everything and stuff i still do now at the age that i'm at but um i had called her and i was like mom i was like I was like, I'm like really, really tired, like going up this hill and stuff. And I'm like, it's not like a regular tired and stuff. It's like where I need to like take a break type of tire. She was like, well, just go to the urgent care down there, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I go to the urgent care and stuff like that. And they prescribe me with some medicine. So I'm like, shoot, all right, cool. We I'm taking the medicine and stuff like that, whatever. And like, I think at the time, like, 
well no 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 at the time i just had a cough so i was really just trying to get rid of the cough but the cough wasn't really going away or whatever and stuff and then well no i think it actually did start to go away or whatever but um it's still like came it still like came up every now and then so I'm thinking I'm trying to get better and stuff, but then um I and if y'all go to Georgia State, y'all definitely know about um uh what is that name of the all right, I finally remembered it. It's Adderhole. I had to look it up. And it's so crazy because I was just literally talking to a nurse earlier and I was telling her about my story and I said I said it then. It's like my memory it it comes and goes but yeah so any georgia state student know if you stay at Patton hall or any of the other institutions and i'm mean, not uh, institution any of the dorm halls and stuff like that and you walk to adder hall that's a long walk okay it is so um so yeah so what you call it when i would like take that that walk there and stuff mind you i told you i i got I got winded going to Langdale Hall and stuff, and that was not as, that was, like, closer than Adderhole. So, what you call it? Adderhole really was, like, winding me, like, so badly. So, I was like, yeah, this is not right. So, <clears throat> and I used to have, like, this feeling, like, every time when I would sleep, like, my chest just felt weird and stuff. And it got to a point, like, I had, like, my, um my bed like up real high or whatever and stuff so i had to um i had eventually um came uh i would like come down off of that and i had like my own like underneath my bed and stuff i had like my own like i guess you could say study room or like my own little like i guess my own little den my own little cave or whatever so i had like this bing bing uh bing bing bag chair and stuff and i would sleep on that so you would you call it um and then i would eventually sleep on the floor like that's how bad it got so but those were my first symptoms and stuff and so i had went to my pediatrician at the time because i had i think this was before i turned 19. this was either before or after i turned 19. i can't recall but i want to say I don't know. It was either before or after I turned 19. I went to um, my pediatrician and stuff like that. They was like, oh, well, what type of medicine did they give you? And girl, they gave me the same exact medicine. If I just told you that when I went to the urgent care, they gave me this medicine and it's not working. Like, I was on bottle number two. And I, that's when I knew something was wrong because I was like, it should have been no reason that I even finished one whole bottle, let alone going on to the second bottle. I was like, yeah, this is not working. So when they prescribed me with the same medicine, I'm like, come on now. Help us to so yeah so they were no help at all so i was like okay at the time or whatever um i didn't i don't think i really had like a primary care doctor and stuff so i had found one uh, emory i think it was emory yeah emory doctor or whatever and stuff in stockbridge so i had went there they was like um trying to diagnose me with bronchitis or whatever and stuff and everything they had gave me every single thing they had gave me was literally like making me sick it was making me even more sick like they had like this nasal spray and like this uh this medicine and it was just like a whole bunch of stuff they had me taking and i literally i kept like throwing up because of it and like once that happened and stuff i was like yeah i know like on the symptom bottle it may cause nausea vomiting all that other stuff yeah no but what you call it it's like you know they say it but it's not like it's actually supposed to happen so i think i had did it one time after i had threw up i said nah that ain't it so what you call so i went back to my primary care doctor and i think the first time i had went they did a check chest x-ray and then when i went back or whatever and stuff they had told me that my heart looking looked enlarged and stuff and that i should um go to a cardiologist or whatever or get an echo done 
So I'm like, okay, cool. So what do you call it? So I think this is around May. So mind you, I somehow was able to finish the rest of the semester and stuff like that, feeling the way that I was feeling. Mind you, I told you I started feeling sick in January, like around MLK B Day. So what do you call it? Uh, around that time and stuff like that, whatever, all the way up until May, I was like sick. Like I'm telling you, some of the symptoms that I had and so before I went and got this echo done was that I was like short of breath. I couldn't go um, from one place to the next like without getting so winded or tired. Like at some point and stuff like I started missing class like so much because I could not make it to class. So how I made it and stuff like that, whatever, it ain't nothing but God. But um, yeah, shortness of breath. I could not eat. Well, I tell you, I would go a whole entire day without eating. And then when I did finally eat and stuff, mind you, I'm hungry. Like, I'm so, I'm starving. And what you call it? I would take a nibble or something and I would, immediately my body could not eat no more. I was like, what is going on with me? Like, I'm telling you, I dropped weight like this. Like, at a certain point, I think I had lost like 30 pounds within like a month or two. Like, it was like crazy weight was being, um, was being lifted or whatever so um so yeah so uh that and then um like i said i was still having problems when i was sleeping and stuff like literally like at one point in time and stuff i remember like um because i couldn't like i can't like really explain the feeling i just know my chest just felt like weird and stuff and i couldn't get comfortable when i slept for real and i had to sleep with like a whole bunch of pillows and all that i would literally sleep on the ground and stuff and you can ask my roommate then yeah she would tell you and stuff like i would literally sleep on the floor and stuff one time i had like the um the uh the refrigerator door my mini fridge and stuff i had it all open and stuff like it was like i was just going through it and then like i think the last thing and stuff was like my feet were swollen so freaking bad like they were buku crazy like, i'm a i'm gonna insert a picture and stuff like that here so y'all could see it but yeah my feet were swollen really really bad crazy so yeah so um i went and got the echo done and stuff and um that same day or whatever when i went and got the the echo done mind you i've never had an echo done I, I don't know nothing about hearts i don't know nothing about nothing because i've been for the most part of my life healthy i have never had like any problems with with health and stuff like that other than like my weight and stuff i've never really had any problems like um any health problems so I um uh what happened? So I had uh I had went got the echo done and stuff, and I was like, dang, I'm like this echo taking like a pretty long time, and a lot of times she kept like leaving out the room and coming back, and I shoot like I said I never got an echo done, so I thought like maybe this was like normal or whatever, but she kept doing it so much, and I'm like, what in the world? So yeah so they kept telling me like you know like all our cardiologists are busy and stuff like that so um you'll have to like schedule an appointment and we'll get back with you buzz it buzz it so i'm like okay so what you call it so i knew something was up when they had called my mom in there and stuff like that and like a cardiologist came in because i'm like saying to myself i'm like didn't y'all just say didn't they just say like all the cardiologists are booked like what <laughs> what a cardi cardiologist doing in here still having no clue like i'm telling you like i had no clue i hadn't i did not think it had anything to do with my heart to be honest and stuff like that i was just like confused like i knew i was going through a lot of pain and stuff and what i was going through it was like weird or whatever but i just had i had no i just had nothing no clue that had um anything to deal with my heart like some time after that and stuff my mom had told me like she um she did read up one time because my mom she does like a lot of research or whatever and she said one time when she was doing research and she was like looking up some of the symptoms i was having and stuff one of the things that it did say was heart failure or whatever but she didn't want to believe that which granted i understand that because i've never had any health issues especially nothing like dealing with a heart like what in the world so yeah so basically that was like yeah immediately you need to be escorted to the hospital immediately and i was like oh <laughs> so what you call it um so yeah so they had explained to me that i was heart failure and that my heart function was only 10 percent and so so mind you i this is a person who ain't never like had any heart problems and stuff like that 
and then they hearing like what you call that they like they have heart problems and on top of that or whatever they um they heart function is 10 percent so heart failure i'm thinking like does that mean like how many days do i got left doc like that's what i'm thinking like my head is that i'm like what now i'm so confused and stuff so they take me to the hospital. I take some meds or whatever and stuff. And what you call, they say, you're going to be on these meds for about three months. And then um, we'll see if it, like, basically, like, boosts up your, like, heart function and stuff like that. Because I think an average person in heart function is supposed to be, like, I think it's 60%. At least, like, 60% or whatever. So, I'm like, okay, so... You know, I'm like, you know, it's a, I'm thinking like, okay, it's a cure to, to all of this or whatever. So I'm, I'm really good for the most part. I'm like, okay, like, you know, I'm straight. Like, mind you, I'm, I have never been like sick like this ever. So I'm like, you know, I'm in good spirits. I have always been an optimistic person and stuff like that, whatever. I'm not stressing. They said they're going to put me on meds. I'm good. Man little did i know and stuff like that them three months was gonna be he double hockey sticks for sure because what you call it i was like literally still feeling the same way if anything i felt worse when i was taking the medicine and stuff like i remember it like it was yesterday like i would gag taking my medicine because i hated taking it like it was like so bad like every time when it came to like taking my medicine i always wanted to throw up like i think at times i did throw up because it was just so bad like i hated taking medicine like, mind you i've never had to be on medicine ever in my life so i had to get used to taking pills i had to learn how to take them and stuff like literally like it was it was so bad but um yeah so what you call it um so i was uh taking a mess for three months and stuff and shoot whether i wanted to you know believe it or not and stuff i still was feeling the same way and stuff and i hated it and i really felt like bad for myself and my mom hated that i like um that i felt so bad and stuff but i felt like it was one of those things where like you know you can't understand unless you in my shoes like how bad it is and stuff because what you call it, at that time um i had i like the next semester was happening and i enrolled back in school so i was staying back in the dorm i was staying in the commons and um all right sorry about that um <laughs> It took a minute for me to get my pump changed, but we good, we good, we good. Not pump, but machine. So, like I was saying, I was in the dorms and stuff like that. My um my tenth grade, I mean my sophomore year and stuff. And I had um I had um I was like I said I was feeling like I was gonna gag from the medicine and stuff like that. Like um my freshman year and stuff, I never took the bus. Like never took the bus or whatever and stuff. I walked literally everywhere and stuff. Number one because I really wasn't familiar with the bus routes or anything. And then number two and stuff, it was just like I just felt like you know why not just walk? You know it's Georgia State. Yeah, so uh i literally like from like my dorm room and stuff like that because i stayed in commons it was like at the it was like at the end so it was like at the corner at the end and stuff like that the hallway so from that like walking from my room to the elevator and stuff used to take me out like oh my gosh it used to be so bad i had to take the bus everywhere so i had no choice but to get familiar with the bus routes and stuff because what you call it i was so freaking tired like it was crazy how tired i was so yeah and then um every every now and then and stuff like that i kept getting like fluid on my legs and stuff and um and it was just like it was just real bad like how i was feeling was real bad but um i skipped like a few parts so let me backtrack so after the three months or whatever and stuff was up or whatever they did another echo on me and they seen that my function was still 10 percent or whatever um so what you call so then they had me get a defibrillator so when i was in the hospital getting a defibrillator and stuff they kept saying like it was a simple outpatient procedure and stuff and what you call it i guess they didn't know like how weak my heart was what you call it but i had i had they had to revive me 
when um when I was in the hospital and stuff I had asked the um when I was in the hospital uh getting the procedure done for my defibrillator I had asked the doctor to uh to go ahead and test out the device and stuff so he um he like broke it down to me and he said basically that means that um you know we'll have to stop your heart or whatever and then like the defibrillator was supposed to bring it back to life and stuff so what you call it so basically it didn't that didn't work the way that it was supposed to and stuff they said the defibrillator did his job but my heart just didn't respond to it and stuff so they ended up um having to revive me and um what you call it like it was just it was real bad and stuff like that like so uh yeah so basically from a simple outpatient regular defibrillator procedure it was like a disaster um could have lost my life but i didn't and to answer your questions no i did not see uh no lights i didn't hear god i didn't hear anything um but uh yeah so because i get that question like asked a lot like did you see anything like did you see the light like no i i didn't see any of that <laughs> but um yeah so that had happened or whatever and stuff and like so just say like the procedure was on a thursday right i was supposed to be gone by friday what you call it why i wake up and it was saturday i'm like huh i was so confused i'm like I, and it was like to me no time had passed and stuff so i'm looking at the date and i'm so confused like that's why that anesthesia stuff really scared me because it's like you really be out your body for like a good period of time you'll be thinking like it's this day and it don't be that day and it'd be this day or whatever and i'm like what in the world like it was crazy i had a lot of people come up and see me and stuff mind you i did not know what was going on my mom did not want to tell me i don't think she would have told me and stuff until i kept asking questions and stuff like that whatever where it came to a point where i was just like she had to tell me and when she had told me i boohoo crying because i'm like i cannot imagine not being here and stuff so i'm like what in the world like that was so crazy to me and stuff and so what you call it i made it my mission and stuff to like make sure i got through this like regardless regardless of whatever it is regardless of what what um uh what I had to go through and stuff like that as far as like my faith with God and you know be me being optimistic and stuff I was like I would have to do whatever you know what I'm saying like I just could not imagine me being here you know what I'm saying like at all okay simple so what you call so yeah that had happened and stuff and so after that or whatever they were still playing with my life, y'all. Oh, my goodness. They were still playing with my life. So, they still let me get out of the hospital. And I was still taking class. Like, nothing freaking happened. So, what you call it? So, what had me come back into the hospital the last time, well, basically, I had um, I had a fluid in my... Um, in my ankles or whatever and stuff so my doctors had told me to come up there and stuff so they could check it out or whatever and i ended up getting admitted i'm telling you it will never be a time i get admitted and then i'm just not crying i'm gonna cry every single time i have to be admitted to the hospital because it's like i just hate being up here you know what i'm saying even after a while like i getting used to the nurses and the doctors they're real sweet they're nice you know a good bit of them but um what you call it like it's like still nobody wants to be up here nobody wants to eat this food nobody wants to be restricted on what they can and can't do you know what i'm saying like uh, i can't i hate when people tell me what to do so it's like ooh, you know it's really er like nerve-wracking but um yeah so what you call it uh i had to get admitted and um when i was admitted and stuff like that back then that's when i had dr jensen and stuff and dr jensen put it this way he said look he said you ain't going home today tomorrow or the next day he told me that straight up he said so all that going home stuff you could just erase that from your memory right now <laughs> i was like well d-a-m-n okay <laughs> fine by me then hmm but yeah, you know, I, but I like a person who blunt like that, who will let me know what's up because what you call it, like they will sit here and like sweet talk you and make it think like, oh, you going home soon and stuff like that and not going home no time soon. So I'm glad he did prepare me for that because I basically end up staying a whole month after that or whatever. So basically, 
um i was quote unquote on my deathbed or whatever and stuff they had me like sign something or whatever and stuff but yeah if i did not get the lvat or whatever then for sure i only had like i think they said like six weeks left if that um but yeah so it was um they, they literally kept playing with my life for sure um but yeah when i was in the hospital and stuff um i had the sweetest oh my gosh mind you i was at st joseph's i had the sweetest nurses to this day i love all of them i don't know if they still in the healthcare field or if they still work at st joseph's but i love them all and if my memory wasn't so trash and stuff like that i would list out all the names and stuff but because i can't remember each and every one of them because it was a good bit of them i'm gonna just keep my mouth closed but shout out to all y'all y'all like literally made my day in the hospital and i was talking and this was both the icu nurses and the um and the uh the like regular nurses on the regular floors and stuff but um yeah so when i had like before like getting the um the lvad surgery and stuff i was really like confused on what an lvad was like i i did my research and stuff but i guess i didn't really understand that the lvad was going to stick with me or whatever so this is what i mean by that so oops, so this is my um my drive line site or whatever and um yeah and it's a cord that goes um through my stomach up to my heart or whatever and stuff and that what pumps the left side of me so when i when i first woke up from like surgery and stuff like well when i was really like starting to walk around or whatever i was so confused like why i was keeping this around me mind you you could wear it different ways i just always wore it as a fanny pack just because i knew i was always on the go i was always doing something and it being on my shoulders i put so much weight on me so i just always wore it as a fanny pack but um yeah i guess i didn't really understand like beforehand that it had it stuck with you or whatever and at the time i had a heart mentor and she was telling me before the fact she was like yeah she was like you should go ahead and name it and this and the third and i thought she was just saying that because it was like something because prior to that i had they had me on a heart vest so it was like a it was like similar to this, like wearing as a fanny pack, but I wore like a vest and stuff like that. And the only time I would take it off is when I'll be in the shower and stuff. So I thought it was simple like that. And I thought it was something that I was able gonna I was gonna be able to take off. But no, it was it was not like that. Mind you, I adapt to things so easily. I think that's like one of the best traits about me is how um I could just adopt to adapt to things like with no problem. So um, once I had learned that, I was like, okay, like, you know, I could, you know, this is not like detrimental and stuff like that, whatever, I could deal with this. So um, but after, um, after all of that and stuff, it only took me 11 days to recover that that recovery process was real quick and stuff. So which call it I was literally, um, I don't know how long I was in the hospital until I got the cert. Well, yes, I do. Because I was admitted to the hospital October 1st. I had got the surgery October 11th. And then 11 days after that, it took me to recover and stuff like that. So I had a great time at the hospital. I got to meet some new friends like Marquis. Um, also, this other man who was like, you know, contemplating about like getting the LVAD surgery and stuff. Me personally, I believe like anybody who's going through this heart problem and stuff like that if they're suggesting a l that and stuff like that i believe that that means it's something serious or whatever and i would just go go with it and stuff and if you're able to bridge the transplant that's great but if not and stuff i would definitely say get the um get the uh the l that and stuff just because simply it saved me like a lot like i'm saying the way i had energy afterwards was crazy my appetite was tremendous like i'm telling you it was on a uh 11 out of out of 10 it broke my scale like it was so high like and i loved it i mean i, I think i loved it a little bit too much because i was eating everything once i got home but the lvad really did save my life and stuff and it still is saving my life so um yeah but that was i think that was pretty much my story i don't think i missed anything else or whatever um i don't regret no parts of it and stuff if anything it makes me who i am it makes me unique it makes me you know it makes 
it makes me a beautiful person you know what i'm saying and i was already had a beautiful heart and a beautiful soul before i had heart failure and i definitely have one now and stuff um uh I appreciate, you know, everything that I have went through and stuff like that. And I don't, you know, take anything back. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a hard process to go through and stuff like that. But I guess that's why people call me strong because, like, I got through it and, you know, and I wouldn't, I, I don't regret nothing for the world and stuff. Yeah, that's my story on how I got in an LVAD. I had a... I had a great journey and stuff and that's what I, you know, had planned for this heart transplant journey. I want only optimistic vibes and um positive energy and you know, just good vibes in general and stuff. So, cuz who knows how long I'm gonna be here. It could be a month, two months, three, you know, you never know. But hey, I'm gonna make sure I stay positive and stay um you know, keep God with me through all of this. So, Thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And please just share to your friends and stuff. You know, some people are, you know, going through the the same thing or just going through a disability in general. And I just want to share my testimony to know that it's okay to be, you know, unique and different. You know, I didn't have plenty of people who done try to like make fun of my condition and all that i definitely understand been there did that and stuff like that but it's you it's 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 god's way of making you unique and making you who you are today and stuff so don't ever be you know shy of that and stuff um you know, and I definitely had my moments where I used to, like, hate, like, going out and stuff because I just felt so different. But don't ever, like, you know, let that shy you away from being who you are and stuff. Because at the end of the day, the people who will get it will get it. And those are your people. But what to call it, the people who don't get it, they don't get it. And they can stay wherever they at. Okay? Period. But, um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Like I said, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. See you in my next video. Bye.